Hi, yeah, it's uh, Xavier down the bottom of the garden. What a surprise. Um, and it's uh, the first of, well, no, I think the 30 degrees starts tomorrow, but uh, it's getting pretty hot. Um, the first thing I feel the need to do is um, respond uh, to the solicitor's letter I received today from, uh, from Jack's solicitor. Um, he's, uh, he's named me as the, uh, the defendant in a, uh, in a lawsuit for defamation of character. Um, after his uh, long-standing good service in the Royal Navy, he feels that uh, my, uh, my comments about the, uh, the activities while he's with us has uh, so soared his character that he can no longer hold his head high. Um, I've looked at the writ, um, I've spoken to my legal team, and they recognise that I don't have a leg to stand on. So, within all humility and recognising the reckless nature of my, uh, my skit, I formally say I'm sorry, Jack. No, seriously. Um, for those of you who did think that Jack had actually uh, done something in my garden, he did nothing but act like a true gentleman, and he brought me some lovely biscuits and we had a great old chat. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Jack again one day if, uh, if ever the police let go of him. No. So anyway, I just want to clear that up because a couple of people thought it was actually serious, and uh, sometimes my humour can be a little bit of uh, a poor taste. So for anyone who did think it was uh, serious, it's not, uh, and I apologise if anyone was offended. You can stop cooing up there. I know you weren't offended. Anyway, right, this is part two of a video that I never thought I'd be doing, but this one, um, I call it um, my Hail Mary uh, treatment, and it's not for uh, any lack of respect to uh, Blessed Mother, but um, it's because I'm going to need more than mortal help, I think, for this one. Um, and literally, I'm going to pull this um, elm, and I'm just hoping that uh, the vascular structure and the stored sugars or energies that may still be within the actual trunk itself may still be enough to kick start it. Um, so the intention is I'll take it out of the pot, I'll have a quick look at the roots, see uh, if, there's, um, if there's a real obvious sign that says don't bother I'm dead um, and then I'm going to do, uh, technically it's an emergency repot but what I'm going to do is um, absolutely cake the roots in sphagnum moss. Um, and I've had some, uh, some of the best sphagnum moss I can find. Um, it's come from New Zealand, uh, which is why it's been delayed, because uh, the round trip was uh, quite expensive, and uh, I've also had to have a sleepover. Uh, so the sphagnum moss I'm using... Am I slanted? I don't matter. The sphagnum moss I used is, uh, says this, it's high quality sphagnum moss. I thought when I bought this, I bought four packs, because I just thought they would be like these massive packs. Um, and uh, imagine my surprise when I got a pack like this five or ago. I'm sure I can do much better, but anyway. So I've got this soaking, and I'm going to be absolutely encasing the roots in that and then putting it uh, back into a wash out bowl. So nothing exciting, but um, I've done it once before, but I've done it three times before, failed twice, and once I had a good result. So I'll be doing up two trees today, um, and it won't surprise you that the other one is the cork bark elm. Now let's see if it's tied down. No. And that's another sign, it's not tied down, which means it's still in my old style pruning regime. Old style um, repot regime, which I've probably done three years ago. And the soil mixes I was using then wasn't up to the same standard. Um, um, I know I put on the uh, previous video sort of like a 200, 200 pound tree. Oh, I'm gutted. I am absolutely gutted. Um, yeah. Gosh, I think root bowel is a bit of an understatement for this as well. I mean the roots, they still look healthy to be honest, some of them. That oh, looks a bit rotten, whatever that is. Having a look, all of the roots that are on there are actually, they look healthy. Um, so, fingers crossed, who knows, anyway. Oh, 
always find when I do is sort of take this sort of extent, um, knowing whether to take two, all of it off or not. Because now I'm in that, that position where there's almost this sort of pulse, this hope that actually it's all right. Um, this, I still think this is a, this is definitely a um, last option, last choice, last hope. I was going to put it in a plastic container, but because the roots are still appear okay, I'm sort of hopeful that if it does show signs of recovery, what I don't want to be doing is moving it overly again. I did actually think it was going to look worse than this. I mean, there's definitely a lot of roots that are just coming away in my handcuff. Um, never wear your sandals when you do an emergency repop your flip-flops because it's I've got dirt going between my toes right now the, the other reason I was uh, worried I was expecting there to be that um, that white that white root rot problem that we often see but truthfully I'm not seeing anything like that what I'm actually seeing is what I'd expect to see on a healthy root mass so I'm gonna be a It'd be bittersweet if this actually works out fine. <laughs> I lose all the main branches, have to grow them again, but hey, definitely think these are all dead. I can tell. Okay, sphagnum moss. Now, I've never done it to quite such a large extent. <sighs> But the sphagnum moss does have quite some um, healing, I say healing, but very good properties, um, which is why it's so good if you get sphagnum for rum air layering. Um, it does promote a good reaction. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm, I'm actually surprised that the roots aren't in a worse state. Um, I think the thing that we discover with bonsai is that with a lot of our trees that have actually died you know a year earlier certainly with junipers and scots pines well all those sort of things because so much energy is held in the actual vascular growth or the vascular nature vascular part of it the tree will um, appear completely healthy for for ages but actually the, <laughs> the real problems happened a lot, uh, a lot longer ago, which is why it's very difficult often to get a tree to recover because it's already gone to make its maker. Okay, so let's get that sphagnum moss around. I've also got um, a little bit of um, vitculite in there, just to pat it out a little bit. Um, and I will put a surface dressing of soil just on top. What I don't want is the birds digging it all out. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I've had, I've certainly had success, not with a tree as big as this, but, and I know, I think, dare I say, I think it might be Peter Chan, who um, is a big proponent for the recuperative um, nature of sphagnum. All that's happening is the sphagnum I was going to be using when I was separating my airlays is getting sucked into this now. Okay, so the idea is that what you're wanting is all the roots to at least be in contact or or covered and it goes without saying you want to keep this in somewhere that's dark well not dark but shady get some sun but the whole idea is you want to keep that moisture in and around those roots but obviously you're not trying to rot it or anything but that's why it's a bit of a I call it a Hail Mary because some of the things you're doing by putting so much 
moisture next to roots that may or may not be responding could end up just leading to them rotting quicker. Uh, but there we go, I'll give it a good watering. And uh, we'll see if it, uh, if it does the job. I mean, um, I don't know. I think this is the one where I had three leaves on it. I'd probably wither it up by now. It's funny, you can see the different coloration. It goes to that really dead brown from the gray, gray bark of the Zelkova. No, <laughs> definitely. Two very, very healthy leaf buds there. And another one there. And looking at that roots, it may be that it's not quite the lost cause, I thought, but still never had it happen to that extent. Actually, while I'm at it, I'll just sort out that ah, crossing branch. So there's not a lot up there either. Um, I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. It is desperate times. Middle of summer. We've got a week of... 30 degrees coming. Hmm. Right, the next one. A lovely cork bark elm. Let's have a look. I know this is going to be shallow pot, although if it if the root structure was really good, it, it shouldn't have made any issue with it. But And again, I'll be looking for signs of disease in the roots and things like that. Now I know why I don't use these. They're very blunt. The roots has got a nice, healthy brown colour, light brown. There's no sign of that mould or any sort of root infection. Yeah, that root's dry, snapped off straight away. So the hope will be again that deep in the core there, something's still just hanging in. Not. Looking at that, there's practically no root. There's a look. There's not the sort of root structure or that you'd want. I mean, they're radial and there's lots of them. But for the depth of that, no, let's just go straight for friable soil. I think. I mean to what roots there are. And also I want to do a big uh, shout out and thanks to Andrew who visited the, uh, the nursery today. Um, we had a good chat for an hour or so and uh, he actually managed to persuade me to part with a tree. So he's taken, um, I was experimenting with doing a, uh, a triple trunk, um, Italian older. So I think I'm sure it's, I'm sure I've got it in one of my wiring videos. I think it's in one of my wiring videos. Um, but remarkably, he seemed happy to, to want to buy that one. So he offered me, uh, for me what he wanted to pay and uh, I was more than acceptable to that. <laughs> I think that's why I'd never make a good business person in the end when someone asks me how much something is I'm like well what do you want to pay? Within reason of course. Um, certainly uh, certainly, I thought he was very very generous. So okay so I think that's Andrew, Andrew Beatty so hopefully your cat sitting went well and and your daughter didn't kill your trees when you got back so with this heat I'd hope you'd be all right. Anyway, getting back to this, that's covered in a nice layer of sphagnum. And as I say, in any, this is more to, to weigh the sphagnum down. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll water that in. Um, truthfully, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, the positives, I didn't see any sign of root rot. Um, didn't smell in any way off. And, and if you've got rotting roots, you, 
it's a bit like damp mulch. You just know that there's something not right. There was no sign of that. In fact, there was healthy roots. Um, no sign of any bugs or critters or anything else that may have caused this. So in both cases, it may well be um, a lack of percolation. Certainly the first one, I know it's the soil seemed. And with this one, it was so shallow that I don't think there was enough, enough soil mass to be able to retain the water that was needed. So in those sort of 35, 36, 37 degrees, despite having regular waters in between, it was enough to, to certainly cook the outsides. If that's the case, it would kill off the leaves and then try and start again. So we shall see. Um, I mean, part of me was wondering whether it's going to be a bit of a, uh, a learning thing in the sense of being going to show you a, a completely rooted mat. I'll be able to, in fact, there will be a tree, I'll better show that too. So I'll put this one away. This one is definitely going to be a root issue. Um, so let's have a look. I mean, I know with pines, there's no coming back from this. There's, uh, there's no needles, there's no growth. Nothing's going to come. So let's have a, look, a little explore. And hopefully we'll see something that will help us with this one. Not a great deal of roots. I mean, that's no different from the one I put it in there. So my initial thoughts on this is it's actually been dead for about a year, surviving off what's left in the mass. Um, there's no actual signs of fungal problems or anything, but there's been no new root growth since I, pl I, since I potted it. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that, because I have no idea what it would smell like. They're quite rotten. They're definitely... Yeah. Um, there's been no root growth. So what I'm suggest, what I'm thinking, is when I did the initial repot from the nursery pot, I think I removed good eight... Um, I think I might have bare-rooted it, actually. I'm trying to remember. Um, either way, um, I think what I did is I removed far too much roots um, and it tried to hang on for a while and then just gave up the ghost. Just no sign of that white, well there's no sign, that's the other thing, there's no sign of the mitochondrial, that white um, beneficial fungus either. So I would imagine it was struggling to take nutrients up through the roots as well because you should have, there should be this fine white, the mitochondria. Yeah, I mean, you, you all know what that is, and if you haven't, there's great pictures of it coming up probably there somewhere. So there's no mitochondria, so the roots didn't function. Um, so we'll find something uh, nice to do with that. I might, I might have a go at saving the wire, and if I've got two sets of pliers, see if I can straighten it. But that'll be for another video. So that's that one. Yeah, that was just a root problem. And this oak. Come on, let's... Let's do the first test straight away on this one. I wondered whether I might get something out of there. That's brown. Okay. And that's what I thought. You can see a difference in coloration. It may be that it'll continue to die down. But actually, it's all dead from there all the way down to there. Now let's have a look and see if there's any issues with the roots. I've got to have one that is covered in white, horrible fungus or death death eating something or other otherwise it just I hate hate things that are unexplained and I know people say you can send off samples to laboratories but who wants to spend however much money on a tree that didn't cost that you look in the pot there's there's no sign of anything in there anything you think is disease by the way uh, before I reuse that I would definitely um, have to uh, give it a disinfect, but chances are I won't reuse really that. So having a quick look, I think the biggest issue here, there's been no root growth at all. So this is another example, it's a small tree, but it's the same issue that they've all faced. The heat was such that it dried out the roots, or the external side of it, long before the next watering, because the roots don't actually look sick, there's just not many of them. Um, so I'm going to put that just straight into a pot. I'm not going to bother the sphagnum moss there because I haven't mixed up any more. I'm just going to put it into a nice old plastic pot. 
I think half the reason for experiment for the, the digging around is to see if you've got any fungal issues and there, there didn't seem to be anything in there so worst thing that happens with this one I mean this is one that got dug up from a sister's garden so it doesn't cost me anything it's just it's just an interesting shape actually I don't want to bury under the bit that I want the new shoot to come from thinking about it just to remind me so I don't suddenly think I need to do anything with it yeah okay Hopefully, um, crude but quick, um, I've shown you two Hail Mary approaches with sphagnum moss on the cork bark elm and the uh, zelkova. Um, that one has still got, the, the real base trunk is still good, so I'll put that back in the soil. And with this one, basically no mitochondrial um, beneficial fungus with it, no root growth since I put it in. Um, and although I can't smell any decay or anything, it clearly was struggling to get any um, resource nutrients through the existing root system so it eventually used up all its resources and then uh, died on me. Um, I have heard about um, you can sprinkle some mitochondrial or that that stuff actually onto the soil. I was going to investigate a little bit more because there's a, a video I saw on YouTube someone did that. But that's for the future. Um, I've got a couple of mugo pines I'm going to do an experiment on one late summer and then the other one in spring, but that'll be for another one. I've still got an Escalonia that has been put back and put back and put back and put back. Um, and I'm very much aware that I'm getting close to the point where I really don't want to be doing any more major work. So anyway, um, whether I've saved my 200 pound um, Zelkova and my 80 pound cork bark elm, time will tell. Um, but that's what I call my Hail Mary approach. I will be quietly saying prayers and devotions and though it's for the wrong purpose I know. Um, I'm still going to ask some help from, from a few bonsai guardian angels. Uh, and for those of you who've watched the end, thank you very much. And once again, Jack, we all love you. And I miss your comments. Come back soon. Um, and I'll settle out of court. Uh, certainly two packs of uh, ginger nuts. Mm -hmm.